Hello, Mr. Sand uh, Sandgard. Um, I'm really uh, interested in talking to you, as most Cholton Athletic fans are. We have heard a lot about you over the last few weeks, and we've got to learn a lot about you because you've been very active on social media. But um, as fans always want, we always want to find out more. So I'm just going to ask you some fun and some more insightful questions. And you just let me know what you can answer and what you can't answer. I can imagine there's a lot of illegal speak and all that. So um, I'm just going to start with how confident are you in the takeover of Cholton Athletic? Hi, Robert. I'm, I'm very excited to, to be talking to you today. Um, and, and obviously, uh, Charlton is a fantastic club. I'm, I'm not only um, very excited to, to be involved and, and, and to hopefully own Charlton here sometime very soon. And as, as you've been able to uh, pick up on, on my comments uh, when people ask me questions, is that I'm very confident that we will make this happen. And that typically happens when all parties have an interest in making it happen. Uh, if, that, if that was not the case, uh, then obviously it would, it, it would be an uphill battle. But all parties seem to want to, to, to make this happen, yeah, whether yeah. it's uh, yes. to Chatelaide, uh, whether it's, it's um, NEMA and, and uh, South Hall, any, anybody else involved um, in, in all of this. So um, I think everybody are looking forward to the bright new for, uh, future for Charleston. Um, and and uh, I'm, I'm actually very excited as to how positively it's going. Now, that sounds uh, very positive from a fan's perspective. Um, Roland had, um, you're saying uh, uh, Mr. De Chatelet has seemed to want to make a deal. Uh, it has with other owner, um, other prospective owners, I should say, has been uh, mentioned as a bit kind of non-responsive, but he's responding to you well, you say? Yeah, we, we have a, a good good dialogue. Uh, primarily with his um, his 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 uh, main main man uh, Levin, and uh, he's he's very very positive, um, and 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 we we actually have a very very positive dialogue with with him. So I'm I'm very excited. Oh, that that's very good to hear. Um, and another kind of kind of stepping stone is uh, Paul Elliott's injunction as well. You're not worried about that at all. No, not at all. And, and in, you know what, if for some reason, if there's something we don't know, uh, right now it doesn't look like the, that transaction was ever completed, but if there's something we don't know and it was completed, then obviously we'll be negotiating with uh, Elliot instead of Nima. So uh, that's, that's very straightforward. And I would assume that the, the deal we put together in, in that event will be the exact same as, as we're already working on. So that, that, that should be very straightforward. I'm, I'm not worried about that. And... I'm saying um, your confidence is infectious. It's making me less <laughs> worried about it too. Obviously, as, <laughs> as a fan who's been right. having to deal with these this stuff for the last four years, it's a uh, it's very infectious. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's, let's make sure we get a clean slate and, and just look forward. Um, that, that's what this is all about. So you've mentioned before that you've looked at several clubs before you um, settled on trying to purchase Cholton and you've mentioned its potential and I just kind of wanted to dig into that and what you meant by that. Oh yeah, it, it started uh, about four months ago when, when someone suggested, hey, why don't you buy an English football club? And I was like, wow, that was an interesting idea. But I, I, I've always been excited about football and in, in particular about where the whole, the whole football world is spinning around England. So of course it, it would have to be an English football club. And um, so there was about maybe 10, 12 clubs uh, that financially would be um, the, a possibility for me from, from the lower end of the Premier League down to the, the top of uh, League One. And uh, just looked at the, the, the clubs that that potentially could could be up for sale. And, and very quickly among those, uh, Charlton started uh, standing out as, as a club that primarily just had problems on the very high levels, uh, at the board level, at the ownership level, and the rest really has an incredible foundation, um, and 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 that's that, that's really what I'm looking at because I'm I'm looking at building things. That that's what I do uh, and what I'm good at. I'm good at taking something that might not look perfect right now, but then taking it to become very successful. That that's where my skill set really is. So everything about Charlton just looked like 
hey, I can definitely take that and, and make it into something great. Um, and and if you look at the academy, you, you, you actually look at the, uh, the the manager, coach, the, 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 the whole staff, everything is in, is in place. Um, and, and then obviously they have fantastic training grounds, a fantastic stadium, uh, things that we, we're obviously still negotiating. But um, at this point, I don't see there'll be any obstacles to, to, to make all of this happen. It, Charlton was just the, the perfect club, and uh, I haven't even mentioned the, the connection with all the Danish players that have, that have <laughs> played there over the years. Uh, it, it's an amazing history, obviously something that, that warms my heart as, as a Danish, uh, Danish person. So. Uh, you said about kind of taking things which don't look perfect and then making them successful. What would successful mean to you for Charlton? Oh, uh, I'm I'm very ambitious. So, please don't take this as uh, you sometimes hear from from owners of clubs and and uh, that that you hear from yeah, pretty much everybody in the uh, in in any division in England uh, every other day that of course we're going to win the uh, Premier League. Uh, but I, I do have that kind of ambition. That that's usually the kind of stuff I I do. Uh, whether it's eliminating competition, um, growing sales of a business. Uh, to a degree and at a pace that nobody else can can figure out, et, et cetera. Uh, that's the kind of stuff I do. So, um, I hopefully we'll we'll be able to uh, to rival Leicester in terms of the uh, Cinderella story that everybody uh, watched here a few years years back. Um, number one, it's about creating stability. If we over the next two years create stability around this club and and. Um, I'm not even saying that we necessarily get promoted immediately, uh, but stability is extremely important. Hopefully, COVID will be over. We get we get everybody back in the stadium to support the team, and after after two years, I, I see we can build the foundation of something here that um, that can go all the way. And when when I say all the way, I mean to the point where we start playing European football. Oh wow, that's a, quite an ambition, and. I, obviously, I'd love to see us there as well. Um, but that's your kind of long-term goal. Um, do you, and so you're saying in short-term, building that stability. And I just kind of want to know um, what, how you would get around making that stability. Have you, talken, uh, have you spoken to Lee Boyer? I've not spoken to him yet. It'll probably happen here very soon. I, I have to be very sensitive to uh, the, the ownership situation and making sure I don't interfere uh, with with uh, daily operations. But um, uh, obviously, that that'll be a natural point. Uh, Lee Boyer is going to be a very very important pillar for me in terms of uh, building this team. Uh, of course, I, I I need to understand what his plans are here immediately, um, even to the point of what his plans are on on each uh, starting position of of the team and. And what kind of style of football that he sees um, that is going to get us out of uh, out of League One um, as, as, as soon as possible? Uh, of course, I'm, I'm sure there's some adjustments uh, that that are needed in in terms. Of, it's a slightly different style of play uh, we we get in League One versus the Championship, and I, I, I want to understand what what he's all about and uh, what his staff. Um, Especially Steve Gallen is uh, how he's approaching the, uh, the recruiting, so that we make sure we have the best possible team here for the start of the uh, the season. But um, when the time is right, I'll, I'll have a chat with with Lee, and uh, he's definitely some someone I uh, I'm I'm, I'm going to trust to to build the team up around. May I ask? Uh, obviously, with um, obvious kind of practicalities there about not being able to be involve yourself too much as you've got to be respectful for of the current ownership um but is there any yeah. kind of people you would like to uh put in in terms of kind of in the staffing kind of maybe to assist steve gallon or maybe even players have you ever thought about that or is that something that's a bit far away for now yeah let's get the uh let's get the deal done and then uh as i mentioned earlier i have a history of, of getting getting into it pretty quickly and then we'll put the right players in place. Uh, the, the, the right leadership, the right management team is, is what's going to make this this happen. Just like the um, like the club had ten years ago. 
Okay. No, I, I will definitely be calling you up then. Okay. I will. I will. You. Uh, you have my because <laughs> I want to know everything about this. Um, but I obviously understand you need to get in the through the door first. Um, obviously, fans care more than about just more than just the team. They have. All, uh, you might have seen this yesterday. No, you definitely have about that CFC uh, for a quid protest that you've um, very generously matched. Um, how do you? go about getting fans on side? Um, is it just about building that stability or is there more to it? Well, it, it, it's about creating the kind of stability that the the staff, the team, the, the players and the fans can trust. So so everybody is on board with uh, what we're doing. But let's make sure we are we are transparent and, 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 and to make sure that uh, we we listen to everybody. Um, I, I want to make sure we listen to the fans because without fans, there's really nothing else. We, I mean, nobody wants to play football in, uh, in an empty stadium, right? I mean, right now we're kind of forced because of COVID. But other than that, uh, we we need the fans behind us. So let's let's make sure that we we, we listen to the fans. We um, we we make sure we play exciting exciting football. When when you play exciting football. Uh, it, 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 it all comes together. Fans are going to love it, but that is also going to attract better and more sponsorships. So financially, it'll be beneficial if you create a lot of excitement around the club. And I, I think by now the fans probably know me enough that I, I should be able to create the kind of excitement around the club that's, that's going to increase uh, sponsorships and, 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 and sort of financial income for, for the club. So that, uh, that that's that's what also will be part of lifting us, uh, hopefully faster than any other club, uh, to to higher levels. Okay, that's uh, thank you for that answer. Um, so you've also mentioned uh, in a previous interviews that you are aware of the community trust and how uh, it's extremely well run. Do you have any plans regarding that going forward, or um, or are you just going to let that run its course? No, I've I've already. Um, I've been been in touch with the community trust as well as the supporters trust, and have um, I would say created really good relationships with with the leaders there. And um, I believe I have I'll have a Zoom call with the with the entire board of the uh, supporters trust uh, sometime next week um, to to get to know them. I want to get involved, and it's something that's that's very dear to me. Um, so I, I hope I can I can personally. Uh, be part of or helping the, uh, the, the community trust uh, as well as supporters trust uh, develop to to more than it even is today. It's it, it's it's some of the strongest organisations that I probably that I see across all of England uh, related to football clubs. Uh, that that is that is massive. And if if I can if I can contribute more to that, uh, that that'll be one of my goals. Um, I've also was going to say kind of like the same thing about the women's team. Have you been in touch with them at all or um, anyone uh, who is uh, representing them? Uh, that, that's right. Uh, they have reached out to me. Um, I have not uh, had any further uh, dialogue with them uh, simply because uh, it, it might not be appropriate on, until hopefully in, in the next matter of days and, or a few weeks that I uh, get everything sorted out. Uh, but they they have reached out to me. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. I'm um, just. Uh, I appreciate your time, and I understand that you might be quite busy there in America. So I'm just going to ask you one more question, and it's something that my brother promised. Uh, I had to promise my brother I'd ask you, and it was just yeah. if there was any small things uh, that you would like to implement, either in the match day experience or anything else, um, only a small thing that you'd like to change. What would that be? For example. If it was my brother, he would like you to put Peroni on tap instead of Foster's. Is there anything like that you would like to do? Anything uh, silly could and small? Repeat that first. Well, what is it he would like to put in instead of? Um, well, else? It was, it was, uh, he wants to change the beer on tap. The beer on tap. Yeah, he doesn't okay. like the. He I doesn't... haven't been there yet, so I couldn't even uh, comment on that. But. Uh, you know what? If if people if the fans don't like the beer, we're sorry. Uh, we either we either switch it up or or we add an alternative. So so people have choices. Uh, uh, choices I was saying, are good. 
<laughs> is there anything small like that that you would love to put in? Like, would you have your personal... I know you love your playing your guitar and like that. Is there any kind of... You'd like songs that you definitely have on during the pre-match uh, kind of experience or anything small? Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, it was that uh, the son that uh, thought it was funny to uh, to have a headline say saying, Enter Sandman. That's obviously <laughs> uh, for those fans that really like the, the, the heavier metal. That... That that could be an amazing entry for for the team when they come out through the tunnel, but <laughs> I'm I'm sure we could do that. I, I love rock music and and uh, maybe we'll we'll uh, we'll be able to uh, to 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 to, uh, to add to the atmosphere of the stadium by uh, playing some good music. <laughs> uh, um, thank yeah, you. I love that. Oh no, no worries. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Thomas, and I, I really appreciate this interview. I'll let you be, and yeah, as I say, um, have a very good time, and hopefully, we'll see you more in the future. Yeah, thanks, Robert. Hey, say hello to your brother too. I will do. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye.